Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and today I am here with a book haul. Today's book haul is going to be uh, from a uh, visit that I made to a bookstore called The Book Trader in Hamilton, New Jersey. And what inspired me to go to The Book Trader was uh, one of my Goodreads friends, uh, her name is Jen, uh, works at uh, The Book Trader. Uh, when I became friends with her, I was just looking for uh, more uh, friends with uh, mutual interest. And uh, it's interesting to find people uh, that live in uh, New Jersey. And with regard to uh, Jen, I had found out that she worked at a bookstore. And I was curious to learn a little bit more. And she told me that she worked at the book trader and told me how amazing it was. When I did some research on it, she was right. It did sound like it was amazing. When I visited, I was not disappointed. I bought a total of 13 books while I was there. And I probably would have gotten more if I didn't have uh, self-control. But let's get right into it. The first thing that I bought was something I was looking for for quite some time at, the, uh, at a price that I would be willing to uh, pay for it. First thing that I got was The Cane Mutiny by Herman Woke. I read The Winds of War and War and Remembrance by Woke. Uh, those were his long testaments, which he said were the main stories that he had to tell, especially War and Remembrance. But the Cain Mutiny is one of his earlier works, and in this novel he looks at uh, the Navy in the Pacific Theater. And I'll be interested to uh, hear about, uh, to read the story that he has to tell in this. And it's quite remarkable that he's still alive at the age of 101. And I think recently he said that his... Uh, autobiographical piece that he released this year was going to be his last. I'm not entirely sure about that. Maybe he's right, but I would not uh, take that as gospel uh, just yet. Next thing that I got was Other Voices, Other Rooms by Truman Capote. Uh, this was his very first novel. And it has to do with a uh, man going into a uh, going to visit his uh, going to visit his dad that had left him when he was very young, and it has that supernatural macabre kind of feeling to it because when he visits the house, he comes across these really creepy. Uh, relatives of his, but uh, like a, uh, a, comes across his stepmother, uncle, and uh, other uh, beings, but not his father. So I'm really inclined to pick this up, especially since uh, I just finished reading the early stories of Trim Capote, and it uh, demonstrates that he had explored uh, horror and speculative fiction in what he's written. Next thing that I got was the stories of Vladimir Nabokov. And from what I have read from him, his writing is just amazing. He's just an amazing individual between that and how uh, much of a spectacular impression he uh, acquired as uh, being a literature professor at Cornell University. People know him most for his uh, novel Lolita, but I own several of what uh, I own several of his novels. Uh, I picked up a poetry collection of his and now I have his stories, which is a great acquisition. Next thing that I got was The Open Boat, poems from Asian America which was uh, edited and introduced by Garrett Hongo, who also contributed a 
poem in here. Uh, and this explores uh, uh, poetry written by uh, Asian American writers, many of which are uh, uh, contemporary uh, and come from uh, the uh, probably, I would say most of them uh, had immigrated here from the Pacific or are first or second generation uh, citizens, uh, but I'm really looking forward to uh, looking into, the, into this and seeing the artistry that uh, can come out of something uh, of this nature. Next two that I got uh, relate to uh, the presidents, uh, me being the uh, enthusiast for U.S. presidential history that I am. Uh, the first one that I got was The Day Kennedy Was Shot, the best-selling, uncensored, minute-by-minute -minute account by Jim Bishop. This was written in 1968, so it will be really interesting to uh, read up on what was being said at this time, because at this time, LBJ was still president, and uh, Robert F. Kennedy was either campaigning or had just been shot and killed. But this follows different times of November 22nd, 1963. And the many points of view uh, as to what was going on with whom at the time. And this can really uh, allow us to uh, pick up some... Uh, information about uh, what really took place during the Kennedy assassination and even uh, grant us the puzzle pieces when it comes to developing our own thoughts about it. And another book about presidents I got was Second Acts, Presidential Lives and Legacies After the White House by Mark K. Updegrove, which has to do with uh, the lives of presidents after their presidency. So it starts with uh, Harry S. Truman, who lived for 19 years after he left office. It follows Eisenhower. Kennedy, unfortunately, uh, was uh, assassinated in office, so he did not have a former presidency. Uh, Johnson, uh, Lyndon Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter. Carter now has the record for the longest uh, former presidency at 35 years. Uh, before him it was uh, Herbert Hoover, who was a former president for 31 years. You also have uh, Reagan, uh, uh, Bush Sr., and Clinton. Uh, this was written during the Bush administration, if I'm not mistaken. It was written in 2006, so George W. Bush was still president. But George W. Bush has had quite a quiet uh, post-presidency, but he'll pop up every now and then uh, during occasions that he finds to be fit. Nothing that uh, Entertainment Tonight or one of those... Uh, tabloid shows would uh, want to get on top of, but it's a pretty modest one. But back to this, uh, I'll be interested to uh, get a uh, documentation of what the former presidents have done uh, since they've left office. I've been recently trying to uh, add cookbooks to my uh, book collection. I'm uh, looking to get into a little bit more cooking, and I uh, want to engage in hands-on reviews where I cook some recipes uh, from these books and talk about the uh, way that the book is arranged, but also share some uh, hands-on experience as to what they have to offer. The cookbook that I got from the Book Trader is The Best of Italian Cooking by Nika Hazelton, and the uh, writing on the bottom, hundreds of authentic, delicious recipes from every region of Italy. I like how she sorts out the fact that 
Northern Italy is the butter region, and Southern Italy is the olive oil region. Uh, I, I would probably say that uh, while I use butter in my uh, plain pasta, uh, I find uh, I, I seem to use a bit more olive oil when it comes to my Italian cooking. But they have uh, all kinds of recipes in here. The uh, antipasta, or the antipasti, the pasta dishes, eggs and cheese get their own chapter, uh, fish, meat, uh, sauces, uh, risottos, uh, or rice dishes, uh, desserts and cakes. And from what I read on the back about Nika Hazelton, uh, she's come out with other cookbooks about uh, the art of cheese cookery, which I would definitely want to look for if it's still in print. Uh, art of Danish cooking, Scandinavian cooking, Swiss cooking. Or the cheese and the Swiss ones are cookeries. There's uh, so much more in here that uh, looks quite impressive, and I'm looking forward to making my way through this. I also bought uh, three novels from uh, Chaim Potok, who is a uh, Hasidic Jewish writer who writes about uh, protagonists that are angsty and are looking to uh, break away from a very structured and strict uh, uh, lifestyle. And are just looking to uh, explore uh, individual opportunities of theirs. Uh, there's the promise, which it uh, it only says that it is uh, uh, a profoundly moving experience filled with warmth, excitement, suspense, joy, and tears. Uh, from the front cover, it seems like there is a love triangle that is uh, pursuing. But if there is. Uh, I'm hoping that it's a good one, because love triangles are not uh, a favorite uh, uh, strategy of mine. In the beginning, which has to do with uh, someone looking to uh, break away from a uh, tight mold that they uh, are, uh, are dealing with uh, in the... Uh, Depression Shadow Bronx, as it says on the back cover. And the Book of Lights uh, was something that really caught my attention. Uh, from the back cover, it makes mention to the fact that uh, it's about somebody uh, looking to seek the uh, enlightenment from what feels like a uh, dark upbringing, which... Definitely want to uh, get into them and also get into uh, a lot of what uh, Haim Potok has uh, written. I feel uh, very optimistic about uh, the exploration I'm planning to take. And I also got three books by Robert Cormier, who is a favorite young adult writer of mine. Uh, I got... Uh, other Bells for Us to Ring, We All Fall Down, which I always remember as being a very uh, grim uh, work because it, it has to do with a, uh, a gang that uh, goes after, uh, assaults and nearly uh, kills uh, a woman or a, a, an, ad an adolescent girl. And then there's Frenchtown Summer, which was one of Cormier's last uh, novels. Uh, Frenchtown is a setting that he has been uh, known to uh, use in his writing. And uh, this has to do with the uh, upbringing of a title character named uh, Eugene, who I believe that this would be him. And for other bells for us to ring to... It has to do with a uh, lonely female uh, 
protagonist. Alrighty. These are the additions to my Potok and Quirmir collections. And here are my other uh, larger books that I had uh, purchased. But they all seem like they are going to be intriguing reads. Thank you for tuning into this video, and I'm going to leave information down below for The Book Trader in Hamilton, New Jersey. I highly encourage you to check it out if you are in uh, that particular area. And I want to shout out once again uh, my uh, Goodreads friend, uh, Jen, who is a, her and, the, and everyone else that works at The Book Trader are uh, remarkable and passionate individuals. Thank you for tuning into this video, and for now, keep reading.